Good evening, everyone, and thanks for tuning in tonight. Our emergency response management team has been working nonstop today, responding to ongoing rain and flooding throughout the state. As we continue the recovery from this summer's flooding, I know this is the last thing Vermonters want to see right now, and especially during the holiday season. So let me say, although there will be damage to infrastructure, homes, and businesses, we do not expect this to be the same scale as July. That being said, some of the places that were impacted in July are currently experiencing flooding once again. So for them, this is July, and it's a real gut punch. So no doubt, there will be significant challenges for some, which we're responding to, and will respond in the future as well. Right now, that means the State Emergency Operations Center is activated, swift water teams have been staged, and agency of transportation crews are responding to flooded roadways and mudslides. And unfortunately, it's still raining. And coupled with snow melt due to the elevated temperatures, rivers are still rising, and we expect them to crest within the next 12 hours or so. So we need Vermonters to follow the advice of local and state officials throughout the night. First, if a road is flooded, don't assume there's a road underneath. So if you encounter one, turn around. Also, sign up for VT alerts to stay up to date on road closures and other notifications. Go to vem.vermont.gov slash Vermont alert. If you're in immediate danger or see someone who is, call 911. I want to reiterate to all Vermonters because I know many are still dealing with this summer's flooding. Although this won't be as wide, for many it won't feel different and will require response and even more recovery. I want to assure you we will be working around the clock with our local and federal partners to make sure our neighbors are safe and I hope you will be doing the same. In a minute, we'll hear updates on our ongoing, ongoing emergency response from Public Safety Commissioner Jen Morrison, on road conditions from Transportation Secretary Joe Flynn, and on the status of dams from Secretary Julie Moore. Also joining us for questions is Emergency Management Director Eric Foran, our Urban uh, Search and Rescue Team Leader Mike Cannon, as well as my Cabinet who are on the line. With that, I'll turn it over to Commissioner Morrison. Thank you, Governor. Good evening, and thank you for being here. I'd like to start my remarks by acknowledging that for many people, this weather event is likely to cause anxiety, fear, and some flashbacks to July's devastating floods. I will admit to feeling a bit of these emotions myself. I want to say that what we are experiencing today is dangerous, and there will be damages. We just won't know the scope of them until daylight. As the governor said, we are hopeful, and there are indications that this weather event will not be as severe as July's floods. We're going to do our best to provide you with timely and accurate information about the conditions around the state. This morning, the Department of Public Safety activated the State Emergency Operations Center. Vermont Emergency Management is working closely with our partners at the Agency of Transportation, the National Weather Service, the Urban Search and Rescue Team, local officials, the Agency of Human Services, the Agency of Natural Resources, the Agency of Education, and many other vital partners. Tonight, our top priority will be keeping people safe and evacuating or rescuing those who are in danger. Stay out of floodwaters. The water is too cold, it's filled with pollutants that are unhealthy, and the currents are unpredictable. We have staged swift water rescue assets throughout the state. The National Guard is providing high water vehicles to assist with rescues as needed. So far, three people have been rescued from a home in Jamaica, and one person was rescued from a vehicle swept away by floodwaters in Waterbury. There is another rescue operation underway as we speak. Additionally, some communities have proactively evacuated occupants of vulnerable properties. We encourage Vermonters to heed the advice of local officials or emergency responders 
and seek higher ground if you are advised to do so. We expect that the high waters will recede by daylight in most areas. Because the peak of this event will happen after dark tonight, I urge everyone to exercise extreme caution tonight. Stay off the roads if you can. Do not drive around barriers or road closure signs. Do not drive into standing water. You know the saying, turn around, don't drown. Please use common sense and err on the side of caution. Clear communication will be key in keeping people safe. If you are in danger or see someone who is, call 911. If you are in need of shelter or other assistance, call 211. I would like to remind local officials that all, concern, excuse me, that all concerns should be communicated to the State Emergency Operations Center through your local emergency management director. Please stay organized at the local level so that we can accurately track the situation in each community. The state is here to assist when local resources are exhausted. Please communicate early and often if you perceive you need assistance from the state. Related to power outages, we had a spike this morning with nearly 10,000 outages across the state. As of 4 p.m., there were just over 1,100 power outages reported. We are working with the City of Barrie, the Agency of Human Services, and the American Red Cross to open a shelter in Barrie at the auditorium as of 5 p.m. tonight. We are also exploring the need to open shelters in other parts of the state. Thank you. I will turn things over to Secretary Julie Moore from the Agency of Natural Resources. Good evening. I wanted to provide a few updates regarding the current status of our flood control facilities on the Winooski River. Uh, at Waterbury at about 8.30 this morning, the floodgates at Waterbury Dam were closed in anticipation of the high water levels in the Winooski River we're seeing currently. As of 4 p.m., water levels in the reservoir were about seven and a half feet above normal, but this is 14 feet below action levels. High peak inflows continue to be observed into the Waterbury Reservoir, and the current peak has exceeded that which was observed during the July 23 event. Current National Weather Service predictions of peak water level in Waterbury are similar to what we uh, saw during the July event. Um, which would again make this about the fourth largest event captured by that reservoir in history. At Wrightsville, again as of 4 p.m., uh, water levels were about 12 feet above normal and rising, but still 39 feet below the spillway. And finally, in East Barry, water levels were roughly 15 feet above normal and rising. We know that water levels in this area are close to that at which Route 302 floods, so urge caution for anyone in the area of that facility but this is still 20 feet below the spillway elevation. Our dam safety engineers have headed into the field and are inspecting each of the flood control facilities and will be keeping a close eye on them overnight. In addition, staff have reached out to the fire chiefs and incident commanders in Waterbury, Mount Pillar, and Barrie to establish communications, and the agency has sent out a flood watch email to all dam owners we have contact information for, as well as speaking directly with leaders at Green Mountain Power and Morrisville Water and Light, and have received no reports of incidents or emergency conditions. And with that, I'll turn it over to Secretary Flynn. Thank you, <clears throat> and good evening. I'd first start by saying you probably, I think, have reported already today Amtrak has suspended operations in Vermont until they're sure of the condition of the lines. <clears throat> we are not, at this point, hearing of any damage on rail, which is good. Cape Air also suspended flights into the city of Rutland today. As of 4 p.m. today, there are 34 roads across Vermont that are partially closed. I won't read that whole list, but I will read the 15 roads that are fully closed at this point as of 4 p.m. Vermont 11, near 100 in Londonderry. Vermont 100 in Rochester, just north of the village. Vermont 100 in Granville, between Matson Hill and Kennedy Drive. Again in Granville, Vermont 100 from Jeans Road to Buffalo Farm, Vermont 106 in Wethersfield, at Vermont 131 into Reading, 
Vermont 14 in Randolph between South Randolph Road and Kingsbury Road, Vermont 128 in Essex, Vermont 2 in Jonesville near Richmond closed, Route 12A in Roxbury, Vermont 12 in Berlin, Vermont 14 in Hardwick at Bridge 95, US 2 in Marshfield is closed. Vermont 100B in Moortown, a second spot on Vermont 12 in Berlin. Vermont 100 at US 2 in Waterbury. You can come off the interstate, but you can't go anyplace after that. You can't connect any side roads in Waterbury. On Vermont 108, up near the Spruce Peak, there is a large 48-inch uh, town-owned drainage structure which we have information has failed and as a result there will be a long-term closure at that section of Route 108 in Stowe that began at 4 o'clock today. At this point we have no information as to how long that will be. More information will be coming but suffice it to say it'll be a while. US 2 in St. Johnsbury is closed due to a mudslide. Vermont 122 near US 5 in Lindenville. Vermont 118 in Berkshire between Purley Road and Privé Hill. And we have heard from 10 towns, and while they have reported some problems at this point, uh, no towns have asked the Agency of Transportation for any assistance. That's the report that I have. Thank you very much, and now I would turn it back to the governor. Now open up to questions. Governor, any communication with, with FEMA so far? Any uh, work from the federal government? Um, obviously, they're still here, um, and I'm sure they're still aware. Uh, General Roy actually lives in uh, in Vermont, so I'm sure he's aware. But we have not. I have not communicated with him at this point in time. It's just too early. Um, tomorrow, I'm sure that there will be more discussion about the extent of the damage and then we'll go from there. But right now, it's about life and safety. Swiftwater Rescue Team, you mentioned that there's a number that have already been staged. Implemented and staged. What, what time, like, were they staged yesterday? Like, when when did Swiftwater Rescue Team? staged sometime during the day, but I'll let Mike Cannon talk about that. Uh, they were staged or rolled out this morning at about uh, between 7 and 9 o'clock. And we have five uh, teams out working actively another five on standby and the state urban search and rescue team is dispatched uh, pro probably mid-afternoon and they have two swift water teams embedded with them so we have seven teams out working right now normally but how normally like in an event like this like how how much lead time do swift water rescue teams need well they're getting accustomed to this unfortunately um so they um they've done a great job uh, over the years and and um, they can they can turn on a dime, uh, so to speak. But uh, again, I'll let Mike talk about that. Um, most of the teams are our partner organizations that we uh, share um, train individuals with. So, um, for instance, like Rescue Inc. Uh, ambulance Service down in Brattleboro, um, Colchester Technical Rescue, uh, Lindenville Fire Department, just to name a few. So those teams are actually pretty quickly out, pretty quick to get out the door. Um, so those are usually our first go-to uh, agencies, um, as, as we did the, today. And then the urban search and rescue team is a much bigger team. It's 90 people. It just it's a it's a larger machine. Just takes a little bit longer for that to get out the the door. So uh, that did not get activated until um, about 10 or 11 this morning, and they were uh, out the door at about three o'clock this afternoon. I guess the other question, Governor, you alluded to in your comments. You called it a, a gut punch. Commissioner Morris said, you know, we were feeling like a, a little bit of a, a flashback here to the summer. Can you just maybe, I heard the same thing from, from folks in Barrie today of, you know, we just got, or uh, people I spoke with just got their heat on three days ago. Uh, maybe can you just reflect on just the recover the timeline for recovery of this past flood and sort of where we're going forward? Yeah, uh, again, we're not going to leave anyone behind. We'll do everything we can to assist them in recovery. Uh, but when I saw some of the pictures of uh, London Dairy, uh, for instance, and seeing some of the businesses there that were impacted in July, being impacted again, 
Um, same with, uh, with Barry. Barry Main Street is closed. Um, we know uh, in Montpelier, I saw that you know, the elevated uh, amount of water, I would assume, I don't know for sure, but I would assume that there are some businesses that are impacted in Montpelier as well. So I will, um, I'd like to turn it over to uh, Secretary Curley. Uh, she's been actively calling uh, some of the organizations and some of the communities that were impacted before to check in on them. Uh, maybe she has an update for uh, Secretary Curley. Yes, thank you, Governor. Um, I have been checking in, and um, as of right now, uh, what we're hearing is that mostly it's basements that are impacted, but um, certainly this is devastating to the people who are, you know, already in a, in a rough spot. But local communities are really stepping up right now. There are volunteer hubs that are, that are activating, and there are folks that are out putting out sandbags and setting up some pumps in an effort to mitigate the impact as well as trying to get inventory up higher. Um, so certainly if folks can safely help in that area, and as uh, Commissioner Morrison said, please listen to local police and, and follow the rule uh, of the local authorities because I don't want to encourage people to get out and about if it's not safe to do so. But um, uh, if there are folks that have some pumps that they can donate, I know that, that um, local businesses would be very happy to have those right now to keep their basements um, pumped out. But again, um, they're trying to do everything they can to mitigate right now. But um, as you mentioned, you know, right now we want to keep everybody safe. That's, that's the first and foremost. But we are, we are seeing some businesses impacted at this point. What has the state done so far to assist local officials? Um, well, we've activated uh, the SCOC, um, so um, they are part of that organization. So I'll let Eric maybe answer that. Yes, thank you. So we did activate the SCOC to a partial activation this morning to provide resources to both state agencies as well as coordinate resource requests from local municipalities. As of now, we haven't had any. Uh, we have made a couple uh, assistance with VT alert messaging, which is uh, out for road closures. Uh, we've also coordinated their information as to uh, sheltering and uh, other requests uh, as uh, for school closing. So that's really what we've done so far, but we are here for them. And as uh, Commissioner Morrison said, the, uh, the process is for the local EMDs to get the information from the local uh, individuals and push that up through the Emergency Operations Center to make sure that it's coordinated and then we can provide the best uh, response as quickly as possible. Are you aware of any other evacuations that have taken place in communities other than Moortown? No. I'm sorry. I was other evacuations? Uh, um, other than Moortown. There were some sporadic evacuations um, that we were hearing third hand. Um, nothing came into the EOC. Um, we were hearing it through some of the local fire departments that we deal with. So I think that there were some going on that were um, voluntary just because river, uh, river banks were uh, coming up or the, the water in the river was coming up and you know, getting close to some of the residents. So we really weren't aware of uh, anything beyond that. surprised by the extent of this storm? Was the state prepared for this? Um, well, we're always prepared. Um, we always have the State Emergency Operations Center and a whole plan in place. Um, but, um, but it hit me by surprise. I knew there was going to be an increased elevated amount of rain today, and the snow melt was, uh, we knew was going to be a problem. But we didn't expect the, this, uh, this elevation uh, to, uh, to the demand or the amount of water that we're seeing right now. Got a few folks on the line. We'll start with Tom Davis, Compass Vermont. Thanks, Jason. Um, Governor, it, a lot of the weather reports and, and uh, weather statements that came out during the day talked about a lot of the impact being mainly in central Vermont. Uh, can we hear a little bit about how the rest of the state is there? Yeah, I would say this is um, maybe more widespread than even July in some respects. Um, I'm hearing reports from all over the state Again, uh, Londonderry in particular, Ludlow, um, through Addison County, uh, up north, Caledonia County, and so forth. So uh, I, th I believe when this is over, we'll, we'll see a wider range. Um, and hopefully it won't be as, uh, as extreme as July, 
um, but uh, but time will tell. Uh, we'll get through the night and we'll be able to answer that better tomorrow. Thank you, no other questions. Appreciate your service on this. Ed Barber, Newport Daily Express. Lexi Krupp, Vermont Public. Back to the room. Lexi, it looks like you're muted. We'll try back in, in a couple minutes, Lexi, but we'll go back to the room. To the shelter in Barrie that was set up, and that you're looking at other areas to potentially set up shelters. Who have you guys been in communications with that you're hopeful you know, could be a potential option for people across the state? Yeah. That's more widespread than you thought. So we've opened Barrie, and I believe the census is currently about 20. Uh, some of those individuals came out of Northfield, uh, but it is open to the public for those that need to, to go there. Uh, otherwise, the, the requests are coming from locals, municipalities, and, and they're going to try to stand up shelters locally for the, the for their short term. And then if they go beyond capacity or they need extra resources, they'll reach out to us. But as of now, we have the one regional shelter in Barrie. Can you talk about the uh, rollback on the temporary housing theme? Uh, we'll just talk about that we will be getting into that on um, probably tomorrow or Wednesday. If we could do that, uh, then I would appreciate it. We have information on that, but I want to make sure that we have it all right. When do you expect the flooding to peak today? Tonight? Uh, we expect during the night, uh, within the next 12 hours, maybe you know soon after midnight. But um, but again. Mother Nature plays a role in this as well. It's got to stop raining first. So, but but that's our expectation. Do you expect future flooding in Barrie, Montpelier? Well, it's flooding now, uh, so I would expect that that would continue uh, again over the next few hours before it starts receding. Try going back to Lexi one more time. Lexi, feel free to send me an email, and we can follow up with you. No more questions with that. Um, Can you say where the greatest danger might be tonight? Is there a specific area that might be in greater, greater danger than other areas? In you know, I, again, I'm, I'm expecting that uh, we're seeing this all throughout the state, and, uh, and we're just not hearing back from everyone at this point in time. Uh, but um, for those areas, I've seen pictures in the Londonderry, Ludlow area, and so forth, and Barry and Montpelier, uh, Waterbury, and Richmond. You know, it's it's somewhat the same uh, as what we saw in July, but it's it seems to be expanded from my standpoint, geographically. So if you see, um, if you have a neighbor, check in on your neighbors. If you have a business owner who needs some help. Uh, please um, step up, help them, give a helping hand to anyone who, who might need it. We'll get through this. Um, Vermonters are tough, and uh, we'll, it's part of our DNA, and I, I'm confident, uh, again, uh, regardless of what happens, we'll get through this together. So thank you very much.